this is a highly underrated option for mortgage lending for entrepreneurs and it does not require a w-2 it does not require your tax returns all it requires welcome back to house of roll my name is camille and this is mike what's up what's up and we are building our forever right now home something that i thought would never be possible as an entrepreneur but we're here to show you that it is possible and it can happen and we're going to break down today the different lending options to help you get a head start becoming a homeowner is one of the american dreams and it often seems unattainable when you're an entrepreneur just because nobody talks about it and there's not many options out there in regards to lending that's what they would like you to think but there actually is and today we're going to go over five different options on how you can purchase or build your first home as an entrepreneur now before we jump into this we must disclose to you that we are not educators nor are we uh, mortgage lenders on home and ownership these are just simply some of the many uh, options that we found in pursuit of our own home ownership. Now let's dive into this. First things first, as an entrepreneur, it is so important for you to keep up with your money. This is why bookkeeping or hiring a professional CPA is so important. When you're going through the lending process, you want to make sure that you have all of your paperwork in order and that you're not scrambling, scrounging around, trying to figure out where your money came from, how to document it, and trying to make sure that you had your taxes paid. File your taxes, keep track of your money, and this is gonna help to ensure a smooth process, a smooth home buying process at that. So we're gonna go into our first option, which is FHA. We have our notes in front of us just to make sure that we don't miss any information. So first of all, let's get started with the FHA loan. Okay, with the FHA loan, you must have a minimum credit score of 500. And with the minimum score of 500, it's required that you have about 10% down. Okay. Mm -hmm. However, anything that is above uh, 500, 580 and above, uh, it's required. Uh, your minimum payment is then reduced to 3.5. Minimum down payment. The minimum down payment is reduced to 3.5%. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, with the uh, FHA loan, unfortunately, the mortgage insurance premium is added into your your mortgage, and you can't and it can't be taken off. Mm -hmm. And they add that because you're putting down less than 20%. So if you put down 20%, I'm pretty sure that they will not add that PMI, which is. Uh, private mortgage insurance, insurance. yeah mm. and last um, uh, with the FH loan you get to income ratio uh, if, if, if we're not mistaken I believe the F your debt to income ratio cannot be more than 43% yes okay. so that is the amount of income you make minus the bills that you already currently have reporting on your credit report so that and your new mortgage amount cannot exceed 43%. And so it's a very intricate way that it's calculated. Um, and there are several different apps and online calculators to help you kind of see where your debt to income ratio is. So I highly recommend looking into that. Option number two, conventional loans. So conventional is a route that not many people take just because it's a little bit more strenuous to get approved of for. Um, the minimum credit score is 620. Now, even with the 620 credit score, it's still considered low. And so there's still more stipulations and requirements in order for you to get approved. Um, now with the FHA and conventional, you do have to show either a W-2 from your business or you have to show your filed tax returns for two years. And so when you submit those tax returns for the two years, what they do is they add the, um, 
adjusted gross income, they add that up for both years and then they divide it by 24. And then that is how much you make a month. So with conventional, um, if you have a 740 and up credit score, they let you put less down. I think it's as low as 3%, but again, that's 740 and up. Um, and then your debt to income ratio cannot exceed 36%. So that is definitely one of the reasons why people do not like to go conventional is because it's, it's not a lot of wiggle room. And especially when you're self-employed and you're writing off everything under the sun, it does not leave a lot of room for you to spend for your mortgage according to their calculations. Um, the other thing is the private mortgage insurance is added, but it can be removed once you reach 20% equity in your home, or if you put down 20%, then they don't add it in there. So, um, trying to make sure I did not miss anything. Um, now, you can put down your 3, 10, 15% or whatever, and then when you reach 20% equity, you have to reach out to them. They are not going to call you. They are not going to send you a letter and let you know. You have to stay on top of it so then that way you can request that the private mortgage insurance be removed. And basically, to my understanding, and tell me if I'm wrong or not, but the private, private mortgage insurance insures the government for this loan. So if for some reason you fall into foreclosure or you can't pay, Default. yeah, then it's like a federal, a federal thing, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah okay. absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. It's almost like a guarantee. It's like yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Okay, and that's it for conventional. And now we're gonna move into an option that not many people know about, and that is bank statements. Bank statement mortgage loans. This is a highly underrated option for mortgage lending for entrepreneurs. And it does not require a W-2. It does not require your tax returns. All it requires is your bank statements. This can be business bank statements or it can be personal bank statements. Um, basically what they do is you will provide 12 or 24 months of bank statements and they calculate that up and then they divide it either over the 12 or the 24 months and then that's what you make a month. Now, this is super awesome for people who have higher deposits and they also write off a lot on their taxes because you could be making, uh, let's say $200,000 a year in bank deposits, but because you write off so much on your tax returns, your tax returns only show that you make 50, uh, yeah, 50,000 a year. Well, of course, you're not gonna get qualified for as much with 50,000 as you are with 200,000. Now, they do try to cushion that to give you, um, or basically to give themselves some leeway. So if you have your bank statements total 200,000 for 12 months they will then divide that in half so 50% of whatever that amount is is then what you make for the year and then they divide that by 12 so basically you would be getting to qualify on a hundred grand versus the 200 grand but that's just because they account for like expenses and things like that um, now, with, is there, no, no, is there any drawbacks uh, with the bank statement loans? Yes, there is a drawback and that is that you will have to get a higher interest rate. So let's say like right now the current market on um, a mortgage loan if you go FHA or conventional I think is like five something percent. So with the bank statement loan you may have to get qualified. Now this depends on your credit because the better your credit, the closer to the rate you can get for FHA and conventional. But if you get, let's say your credit score is lower, you may have everybody else in FHA and conventional paying 5% and yours is eight or 
but this is because you went a non-traditional route for mortgage lending. But let's say your credit score is higher than everybody else in FHA is, FHA and conventional is 5%, you might be at like 5.65%. Do you get the difference? And so in other words, what you're saying, the better your credit score is, yes. even though you're going bank statement, yes. you still can get a decent interest rate. Yes, okay. yes. Okay. Credit score is everything. Mm -hmm. That's a whole nother video and we will talk about that a whole nother time. Um, so the minimum credit score for a bank statement loan is 500 and that sounds really low but if you go if your credit score is that low you may be required to put down 20 percent of the purchase price or 25 percent so that is a lot of money for a lot of people i mean two thousand dollars is a lot of money for some people um which is why the fha and conventional always seems so much more attractive because it's only three percent down um but also too you know uh we don't want you to get discouraged uh, yes. because keep in mind, even though that you may um, be required to have uh, more down and really not only helps. that, yeah, it, it really helps, but also you might uh, uh, be faced with a higher interest rate. The good thing about this is that in a year or so, you can mm -hmm. always come back and refinance. And refinance. Yep. When you get your credit score up or if you get... Um, let's say you start not uh, writing off so much on your taxes you can just come back and uh, in a year and then try to get approved through fha or through conventional or even based on how the markets are fluctuating yep this is true you know, so this is true um they do allow 1099 option and so if you get paid through 1099 technically that's considered self-employed so they do allow that as an option um and you do have the option with bank statement loan to waive escrow. So escrow is basically they, you pay them every, you're in your mortgage payment, you're paying for your homeowner's insurance and your property taxes. And so you have the option to waive escrow and to take that out. And so you're just paying straight principal and interest, but you're not paying towards your homeowner's insurance or towards your um, taxes. taxes. Also, there's no private mortgage insurance because it's not a federal-based loan. And with bank statements, they don't sell out your loans. They kind of keep it in-house, if that makes sense. Um, I think I pretty much got everything for that one. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, so the slightly higher interest rates, yeah. So that's a really good option for a lot of people, especially if you write off a lot on your taxes. So we're gonna go into our next option, which is credit unions. The good old credit union. Now credit unions tend to have some different options as well that I found during my research that if I would not have called and started asking questions, I would not have found out about. Um, I know here locally where we are, the Credit Union of America has an option that is called the portfolio loan. And so basically it's an in-house loan. So they don't sell it on the market. It stays in-house. Um, this is highly based off of your credit as well as what you can show on your tax returns or your W-2s. Now. Your tax returns, they're gonna do the same thing. They're gonna do the two years. They're gonna average it out, see what you make. However, what they do is they are allowed to add back in some depreciation from some of the things that you wrote off. I don't know how they calculate that, but they are able to add some of that back in, whereas a different bank may not be able to add in anything. What you show is what you show. Um, they also have an option where if you've been a business owner, not credit union, but Meritrust Credit Union, if you've been a business owner for five years or more, five years or more, and you've been paying your taxes and you have been keeping diligent records of your home, I mean, not your home ownership, but of your business ownership, then they will allow you to only have to provide one year of federal taxes, which is pretty cool. If let's say 
your first year in business you only made 20 grand but your second year you made 250 well that's gonna that 20 grand year is gonna really bring you down and what you make a month but if they can if you've been in business like I said for five years then they can just do one year tax return so that's a really good option so basically they just look at your history yes uh, to determine uh, whether yes. or not you qualify or not yes okay. and I don't know if you're picking up on the commonalities of these but make sure your credit is right Make sure you keep an accurate documentation of where your money's coming from. I try to make sure to streamline all income through only one or two sources, and that is through Square or Cash. I don't accept Cash App, I don't accept Zelle, I don't accept wire transfers, check, money order. I only accept Cash or payment through Square. And this helps to make sure that everything is funneled just those two ways so it's there's no confusion there's no trying to figure out where all my money is coming from now last but not least it is my favorite option and which is simply the cash op the cash option mm -hmm. all right to me it it it, it, it cuts out the middleman uh, simply if you, you if you can afford this means you know you find a place that you want or find a place that you like and you just simply go and you just lay the cash on the table you avoid paying the interest rates you avoid the long the long-term commitments and all the headaches are done uh, you don't have to worry about any escrow anything of a sort just simply no private mortgage insurance no private mortgage insurance just going out with the cash and just purchasing the house so for me you know that's the most simplistic way of doing things and I keep it simple you know but Regardless of what we have said to you on this video, once again, we just want to uh, put a disclosure in here that, that we're not professionals. We're just mm -hmm. trying to uh, aid you in terms of pursuit, your pursuit of acquiring a house. So make sure that you do what, babe? Get with your local lender, mortgage broker, or whoever it is you want to go through to purchase your house, well, to get money to purchase your house. One thing that I did forget to mention with all of these is um, you have the option of 15 year or 30 year with all of these. Um, bank statement may have another option. I was reading something about a 40 year. I'm not for sure. I don't know about that. Do your research, look into it but most of them are 15 or 30. Is there a 20 year option? I don't know, but you know me. I don't know, but you know me. I'm like that movie, get out. In other words, <laughs> get in it and get out as quickly as you can. I prefer the 15 year mortgage, mm -hmm. okay? But that's just my preference. If it's not yours, by all means, do what's best for you. 30 year or even the 40. We would love to know what you think in the comments. If you've built your home as an entrepreneur, if you've bought a home as an entrepreneur, we'd love to know in the comments what method you used or if there's another method that we did not disclose today that you know of that can help somebody else, we would love to hear about it. We really hope that this video encourages you and gets you motivated into wanting to purchase your first property or maybe purchase your next property. But home ownership is attainable as an entrepreneur and we are here to prove it and we would love for you to follow our journey as we build our brand new house. And we would love it if you subscribed and if you liked this video. Until next time. Peace out. Whatever you do, do not get discouraged. Amen.